So give her a big FedCon welcome, please, to Candice McClure or Dee Douala. Hi, guys. are awesome. Do you know that it was t almost 10 years ago that I was here? Eight years was the last time I was in Germany. That's God. too long. Too long. <laughs> too long. It's way too, too long. long. Oh my God, there's people sitting all the way up there. Yes. Hi. All, all <laughs> One more time for the kids in the back. Sorry, it's been early. I've had a lot of sleep. It's <laughs> should never give an actor too much sleep. We start getting ideas. And yeah. Nobody likes that. <laughs> We're just supposed and to say our well, lines. I'd say welcome to Bonn after, um, after a long absence. It is so beautiful here. I, well, hold on. Let's see. Is anybody actually from Bonn? Where? Oh, oh there you go. Yep. Hi. Three. Three You live people. in a beautiful place. It's very beautiful. <laughs> and and I'm from Vancouver, which is a beautiful place. So I know what I'm talking about. Very beautiful place. <laughs> yes. And uh, we were, in fact, because um, how long did you, did you live in West Van? Uh, oh, yes, we have a connection. Yes. Um, well, born in South Africa. I'm sure most of you have seen that on my something. And then, and then <laughs> born in South Africa. And then did you move I was born as in South a small? Yep. I, uh, when I was a teenager, I moved to Vancouver. I know I'm supposed to sit, but it's like Yeah, you don't huge, have to. I don't want to sit. We can move these back. Because I so am we, five foot two in the morning. Yeah. And then you'll just um, disappear. <laughs> I'll just and move them five back. Five foot one by lunchtime. Nice. Four eight by dinner. That's why I wear heels. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and so uh, we both lived in um, West Vancouver. So that's pretty groovy. And I graduated from West Van High School. Yes. I was at Hillside High School. We were rivals, yeah. essentially. Yeah. <laughs> but all that's finished now. Because Hillside High doesn't exist anymore. It's housing. West Van won. <laughs> <laughs> West Van High rules. <laughs> it's such a fancy school now. Um, okay, yeah. enough about my high school. I'm sure someone here has a question for me. Now. Yes, you can, have, you can ask a question if you like. or uh, I'm going to be judging your questions. Yeah. I'm just going to let you know. Well, <laughs> yes, yes. We will be judging your questions from one to five. <laughs> But I should ask you, when yes. you graduated from high school, did you yes. know you wanted to be an actor? Or did you do acting stuff at high school? I did not. Wow, because that's quite unusual. And it is particularly because West Van has an excellent theater program. And they would compete um, uh, what do you, in the improv games and came first a number of times. Wow. I was too shy. I was too shy for improv. Because if you had done that, we could have had a, our very own improv show. I also didn't know I was funny until like my later. 30s. <laughs> Humor not came funny. later in life. Not just funny <laughs> looking. Um, and, then, and then why did you, and so what made you go acting? Didn't. Oh. Um, did not. Uh, I, you know, my mom and I, we were immigrants in Canada. And um, my mom had to requalify as a teacher. She was a teacher in South Africa, but her certificate didn't count in Canada. So she was going to school. She, I mean, I, my mom used to work 16 hour days. I would never see her. She'd work an eight hour shift in the morning. She'd come home and sleep for a couple of hours and then she'd work another eight hour shift. I would leave her notes to say good morning and good night. Wow. And uh, when I was in high school, I was, wor I was working two jobs at the end of high school. Uh, she would write me notes so I could leave early um, so I could start my first shift. Uh, on the weekends, I worked both jobs because um, I had to pay rent. I had to buy food. <laughs> wow. Um, I don't begrudge those times at all in my life. Um, I am very resourceful. <laughs> um, and I know how to take care of myself. And I'm very grateful to my mom for those life lessons. I think and you must really have important. a fantastic work ethic. You got to do it, right? Yeah. Um, I love to work. I love being tired because 
I've been at work all day, being tired because you're bored or lonely or restless or don't know what's going on is way worse. And as an actor, that does happen from time to time. <laughs> there's, there's, there's small gaps. Yeah. And then what made, and then did you just, did you get right. offered something or did yeah. it just something presented itself to you? Um, out of high school, um, I was just kind of being kind of sad and moody teenager. <laughs> and my mom sort of had enough of it. Um, somebody called the house and left a message on an answering machine. Remember those? I should have kept it. Hi. And um, asking for my mom to play the role of a 17-year-old South African girl in a local play. And she called back and said, you should talk to my daughter. <laughs> um, and I was kind of the only 17-year-old South African girl in Vancouver at the time. So um, of this color, she had to be this, this skin color. Um, so he gave me the job. And I, that was how I started acting. Wow. Uh, we would rehearse at, he went to a school, a class. Uh, if anybody, you've all heard the story, but everybody knows uh, the X-Files, the old X-Files. <laughs> the original X-Files. Uh, William B. Davis was Cancer Man. Mm. William B. Davis gave me my start. Wow. Because he has a very big um, uh, acting a, school. He has in a Vancouver. school, and we would run our scenes in his master class. Wow. And he came to the theater um, one night to see the play and didn't say anything to me, <laughs> uh, but called his agent. And the next message I got on my answering machine was from his agent saying, My name is Richard Lucas, and I was told by William B. Davis to call your daughter. And uh, I remember when I went in for that meeting, Richard, I love Richard so much. He was so annoyed. He was so annoyed that, Willie <laughs> that Bill Davis had sent him this girl. And he was just like, you don't know anything. He had got me to read a, a scene. And he was like, all right, well, you're very green. But at least you looked up from the page. <laughs> and then as kind of like, this is Richard's sense of humor. Um, because William had, <laughs> he had bugged him so much about me um, that he sent me out on an audition just to say that he did, you know? Like, let me just get Bill off my back. Let me just send this girl out for an audition. But the audition was for a boy. <laughs> <laughs> did, did he just like go was, down the page and yeah, go? It was like that one. No, it was the age range. It, wow. Because there were a lot. There weren't a lot of like black roles, and uh, and I hardly ever went out for black roles. Um, but it was the only one on his sheet that was like my age range and my demographic. They call it. That's a polite way of saying it. This is my demographic. <laughs> um, and I booked it. And he was kind of pissed. <laughs> so was the casting director. The casting director called and was like, what are you doing? Who is this person you're sending me? There's nothing on her resume. There's like the Merchant of Venice that she did in grade 10. <laughs> um, and they had to like, like make, make it up. Make, they had to like make pad stuff my up. resume and like, they oh didn't God. know how to pay me because I didn't have a quote, and it was hilarious. But that was my that was my first job in a class of his own with Lou Diamond Phillips. Wow! I played a a boy named Brady. No, they changed it to a girl. I mean, I kept my name though, Brady. I had long braids. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. God. So you're and just like. I they made more money you. than I'd ever seen because I was getting yeah. paid, you know. 650 an hour in my waitressing fast food jobs. I worked at Wendy's and um, and I was like, whoa, I'm rich. I took my mom to Ikea. We bought beds and like <laughs> matching covers and stuff. And we're like, wow, <laughs> all our furniture we had ever owned came out of an alley or somebody's basement. Like, <laughs> so that was fun. So you thought you were on. And then I learned about taxes. Oh. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. I'll have <laughs> um, There's a spotlight yeah. over there. Yes, and on the Star uh, Trek woman. She's been waiting so patiently in her beautiful yeah. outfit. Hi. Yeah, it was a question I wanted to ask was yes. how you came an actress. And oh, there the second you go. one was, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what do you think is the most interesting about your profession? Oh, my God. Mm. Mm. <laughs> First of all, it's kind of the biggest joke. To me, it feels like a cosmic joke <laughs> in a really good way, because to me, th so they have this saying that the actors, the teachers will say in class, what's wrong in your life is what's wrong in your acting. Um, and sometimes that's hard to hear <laughs> when you're in class and you're trying to get through something and it's hard and you're like, well, what's wrong in your life? Um, but uh, to me, so many of my roles have paralleled where I am in my life in kind of an eerie way. Sometimes those lessons are difficult. Um, I certainly think that Ron Moore and the writers on Battlestar were incredibly keen. They were very, very aware. And they would spend time on set with us and they would see where we were and how we were behaving in between takes, I think, because um, I didn't even know how depressed I was on that show. I mean, I was young, you know, 20, 22, 23, when I first got on that show. Um, and why would I be depressed? <laughs> you know, I, I landed on the most at the time, it was the biggest show in town. Like, Vancouver as a city was still coming up in the film industry, it was really busy, but BSG was the show. Like, if you got on that show, it was like, all right, okay, all right. Um, but I didn't know what I was doing, and um, I didn't even know how big it was, because we were shooting in Vancouver. You know, it's Canada, nobody cares. <laughs> it's no star system, nobody cares. Um, but, so, Throughout my career, which has now been 20 years I've been doing this job, um, it's afforded me the opportunity to like exercise things about my life and about myself. Because it's a bit narcissistic. We are actors. We look at ourselves a lot just by virtue of our profession. <laughs> Um, and that's kind of the, the bad side of it. The good side of it is that it requires self-analysis and self-reflection. You have to look at yourself and go, you know, where am I? What am I putting out? How am I coming across? Um, how is my behavior affecting my life? Because that's my job. My job is to affect you. My behavior and my words are affecting you, so then you affect me. That's what acting is. So you have to understand what that is, but when you're out in the world, you're still doing it. And so in acting classes and in my job, it's taught me so much about myself that I didn't know. It's kind of forced me to know myself better. And that to me is one of the greatest gifts of this job. And then I get paid to do it, what? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Thank you the best thing. That's why I kind of think it's like, does anybody else know this? <laughs> Don't tell them. Don't tell them. <laughs> no, it's, it's the worst. It's the worst job. You, know, you don't get to meet anybody cool. You don't do any cool things. <laughs> like, yeah, I remember, I mean, I've learned to kayak, to DJ, to ride a horse. Um, I've had to learn bits of other languages. I've learned weapons training. I've trained in boxing and in uh, dancing. I've, you know, I've had to do choreographed routines. So it also teaches you how to um, super learn. Um, if, hmm, this would be an interesting question because we're so far away from home. But are there any Tim Ferriss fans? Has anybody ever heard of Tim Ferriss? for the kids in the back. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Tim, 
Ferris is an American um, writer, author, and uh, he used to work in startups. He's a super smart guy. Uh, he has a podcast called The Tim Ferriss Show, if you're ever interested in it. But he talks to really successful people and asks them how they did it. And he culls from them their habits and attitudes and uh, these kinds of things. And I listen to Tim Ferriss quite a lot um, because uh, you have to learn how to super learn. You have to learn, like, what are the critical things about this new skill that I need to understand in order to look proficient at it on uh, TV. And it's led to a lot of funny moments, like me on trails in Toronto, squatting, looking at people's footprints for like 10 minutes. <laughs> People jogging by and they're like, is she, is she okay? <laughs> it's almost like being a very convincing liar. Yeah. I'm a yeah. terrible liar in real life though, that's the problem. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I had, to, I had to learn things about survival skills and tracking animals and riding a motorbike. Like, I get to, I get to do really cool stuff. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. That would be good. Anybody else? And, and then, uh, yes. should, uh, yeah, and if anyone wants, you just stride up like that man. Hello, Spotlight. Oh, see, that would have been so cool if it actually... There, spotlight. <laughs> Hello. Uh, welcome to my hometown. Hey, First thank all, you. Um, what was your initial reaction when you found out that the authors had the destiny for your character to commit suicide? I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> that is the God's honest truth. I was pissed. Um, not so much about the storyline, uh, as a matter of fact. Um, but just sort of how it all went down. Um, I was sad to leave the show. Um, and as a consequence, I'm a bit of a brat. I can't tell. <laughs> so it was not your decision, it, it was theirs. Oh, it's definitely not my decision. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no actor wants to die. You, you need the word producer on your resume and then like something like executive or creative in front of that word in order to have any say whatsoever. Uh, the actors do not have a say. We do not have a say. <laughs> um, in the best circumstances, you can kind of uh, talk to the creative branch and say, oh, can I say this differently? Or what do you think about that? Or I don't think this person would do that. And, uh, and good executives will listen. Um, but they're pretty fed up of notes by that point. If you've ever seen a script, the front page of a script, if you look down on the lower left corner, you'll see how many drafts there are of that script. Now, understand the first line when it says studio draft or network draft, it's probably taken that writer eight versions to get to that one. And then you get notes from everybody. So the last person you want notes from is the actor. <laughs> Just say the line. <laughs> um, but uh, in the case of Battlestar, listen. Ron Moore, I don't think there's a word that quantifies how expansive Ron Moore's intellect is. <laughs> so I could never dream to know the scope of what he was ultimately trying to do. But I did have faith that any decisions that they made was in service of the story. Because this particular show, the story was always king. Everything that was done was, was it's not personal. It's, it, this is the story we're telling. Um, respected that because, well, you guys are all sitting here because of it, right? Yep. Yeah. But, you know, I had a tantrum, kind of, because <laughs> they didn't tell me and I heard from the hair and makeup people and that was a drag. I'm like, 
came on to set, and they were like, oh. And I was like, what? And they're like, oh, you should read this. And I was like, no, I get it. But oh, couldn't you have called me before I got to set? <laughs> um, so I read it, and it was a beautiful script. It was beautifully done. I could see that they gave D. Uh, the send-off that they gave her reflected who she was in the storyline. Uh, and I was very grateful for that. But it sucked to leave the first episode back of the new season. It sucked that I wasn't going to be there to see it till the end. I hated that I had to leave. These people are my family. You're with them every single day for years. You go through all these really intense things. The show blows up and you guys are there together. I mean, I don't want to cry. I saw everybody yesterday and some of them I hadn't seen in so long and I love them. And the fact that I wasn't going to get to hang out with them every day, like I didn't understand what that was. To the point where I couldn't watch the show afterwards because I would just cry. <laughs> I would just like, I'd see stuff going on and I'd be like, oh, I bet that this was happening and like, oh, you know. Um, and it sucked. So for a long time, I just didn't watch the show <laughs> after I left. But, um, but yeah. But now, in hindsight, I, you know, I get it. I get why they made that decision. I get why Duala was the one uh, that represented that very human perspective. It was a difficult thing. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Yeah. I, it's bright. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Uh, you just mentioned uh, some of your skills you had to learn for different roles. Yeah. Um, was there anything among it that you did or would like to pursue further on? Oh, so many things. <laughs> so many things. Um, I really need to be a better horseback rider. Um, Horses are so beautiful. And now with all these like superhero shows and oh, um, I want to, you know, I want to be a warrior princess. I want to I want to be in a desert on a horse with a spear. And I don't know. I like, yeah, <laughs> apparently I need to know how to ride a horse to do that. So I want to be in Westworld. Yeah, <laughs> I want all those things. Um, so definitely horseback riding. Um, Sailing would be great. I don't know any of them. I just like learning new stuff. Like, uh, and you know, a lot of the time you're getting experts because like you got to learn it fast, so they're not trying to mess around. So they bring in like really great people. There's one skill that I I'm very surprised um, that I have now that I it's very it's kind of controversial, but I like I have to know how to handle a weapon, obviously. Um, and I'm pretty good at it, <laughs> weirdly, because uh, I have a lot of respect for guns. I have a lot of friends who are hunters, and I get that thing. The whole other side of it, oh, it's such a, such a pain in the ass about, I mean, it's crazy. I don't, like, people in suburbs shouldn't have automatic weapons. It's, like, it's crazy. Um, and the people I know with weapons are, very respectful of those weapons. I, it's hard for me because my grandfather used to hunt. That you, my great grandfather was a hunter. It was part of his business. That's how um, my great grandma, my grandmother's family uh, lived for a long time. So I, I understand that side of it. But um, but in TV, when I have to audition for NCIS, then uh, <laughs> I have to know how to handle the gun, and I can do cool stuff now. Not that I would ever do it in real life, but I can do cool stuff. I can <laughs> I can single hand reload and I can shoot behind my back and I can do a walking shooting and I, I mean it feels good in the range. Um, I can't ima imagine ever pointing it, oh my god, at a person is crazy. But, um, but the skill of it uh, is, uh, yeah, it's an odd feeling. But yeah, there's a skill I didn't, <laughs> didn't ever expect to know to have in my life and now I do. <laughs> I hope it never comes in handy, ever. <laughs> Um, 
Uh, what it, else was so cool? Yeah. Is, is there any skill you have that you would never use again? Just something that's just kind of not what really am, worth What am I doing knowing? with this exactly? Um, I mean, I learned how to DJ very poorly. And I've dated enough DJs to know. <laughs> I don't need to be a DJ. That's what iTunes is for. <laughs> But it must give you a good appreciation. At least you kind of know, oh, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when I had to learn hunting and tracking skills for Hemlock Grove, that was very cool. And I'd like to know more about that. Um, because I want to know how to follow people? Never mind. <laughs> well, in case you get lost, though, in the forest, you'd be good. like yes, right, right in there. Yeah. You'd good. be Think. so Positive thinking. safe. Right. Yeah. That is what she said. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think I answered your question, but there you go. <laughs> Hi. Hi there. How are um, you? That's a great uniform. Thank you, ma'am. Good fabric. Sorry. We're, we've seen so many of the uniforms now. We're all like, oh, yeah, you got the right fabric. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. Um, I have a kind of specific question. Uh, yeah. I was wondering when the character of Billy Kekia died, uh, were you, as a person, sad because you thought your characters were going to be together? Or were you like, yes, I'm going to be with Apollo now? Um, when Billy's character died, I did not know that I was going to be with Apollo, necessarily. Here's the thing about network TV. <laughs> you can think something's going to happen, but that's not necessarily what's going to happen. They can change their minds at any point. And I didn't quite understand the relationship with Apollo, to be honest, in the beginning. Um, it seemed like a bit of a mismatch to me. And I, and I think a lot of people agreed. <laughs> um, but, you know, that storyline was a device to bring Kara and Apollo together again. Um, I thought it was crazy. I was just like, what? What? <laughs> Why is he dying? Does that mean I'm going to die? Because we were supposed to be together. Damn it. I was really looking forward to, you know, when he says, like, oh, they better have babies when they see Billy oh, and yeah. I, and I was like, yeah, cool, okay, we're going to date, and then I'm going to get like a pregnancy belly, and then we're going to have this little space baby. Um, <laughs> I was into it, and then he died, and I was like, what the frick? <laughs> um, I was sad, uh, because I really like Paul, <laughs> and I was, he's so funny, and does the best Christopher Walken impression, um, and I was looking forward to working with him, and I didn't understand what was going on. Um, in that scenario. And then it sort of actually kind of put the fear of the executives into me. It was when I realized, and I was like, oh, we're disposable. <laughs> <laughs> they will just kill you off. That's how that works. <laughs> like, um, and just rewrite everything. But I'm so uh, glad that they found another way for me. And um, and that, and the Apollo D relationship, as much as people hated it, <laughs> was um, was a real exercise for me uh, as an actor as well. So I'm, I'm really grateful to it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. But yeah, when he was, when I was crying over him, I was totally crying. I was actually really crying. I was like, "You're an idiot! What are you doing? Don't." Cause you, yeah, because you two were so cute. I, th I thought, yeah. Aww. You know what? Sometimes I thought like maybe it was just the camera department that was just so tired of building ramps of apple boxes so that we could, because I mean, and she's very tall. I'm five foot too. <laughs> He's so tall. Like so, they would always have to put us on stairs and stuff so that we could actually be in the same frame together, or else it'd be like the top of my head and the bottom of his chin, and like it just. Or they would build these walkways for me. We had a walk and talk once, and they built a whole walkway oh, of a ramp wow. for me just so I could walk beside him, but then I would keep falling off. 
So that's annoying. <laughs> wow. So and learning how to walk in a straight line and talk, that's a skill. Also, you have to like do this thing where before you go onto the ramp or when you come off, you have to stand on your tippy toes because you got to be the same height as the ramp <laughs> before wow. you stand on it. Yeah, some tricks. The stairs were easier. And I yeah, would just like... Because I think when you two died, it was kind of like, I thought, oh, it was actually this lovely, and I could see why they wanted to do it in a way, because it was this lovely romantic amidst yeah. all this horribleness going on. We were supposed oh, to be the sweet. Yeah, there's and young then, love. Oh, don't get it twisted, though. Yeah. They, they always they, kill the kitten, right? That's right. When you see a TV show and there's somebody who's, like, really good and really kind, and they are toast. They're gone. <laughs> yeah. Not if a you're toaster. too happy, if you're too happy, <laughs> you're gone. Because you know, stories have conflict, and they always have to have something going on. There's got to be a problem. So if two people are too happy, they have to kill one of them. For the writers in the room, I'm sure you you've read the writing book. Kill the cat. <laughs> yeah. There's a cute cat, and it's in a tree, and somebody's coming to rescue. Kill the cat. Yeah. <laughs> They're always doing that because people can't be too happy because happiness is in real life, hopefully, no. but never in TV or films. I have a question. Oh, somebody else has a question. Oh, she's waiting so patiently up in the... Hi. Hello. Um, I got a kind of weird question. I love it. Oh. <laughs> Remember, I'm judging all these questions. You're doing really good. So Did you, as actress, use vengeance at any time in your performance or your character in what she did in Battlestar. Vengeance toward whom? In my real life or in my character life? In your character life. Did you as actress use vengeance for your character for a performance? It's interesting because there was a script. Hello. Oh. There was a script that no one ever saw uh, because they did not make it that looked into Dee's background. Uh, we would have gone to Sweden, we would have known uh, about her family, and you would have seen Dee in her home environment. And in that script, I could have, I could have seen that. Because you saw, um, like, the reason she chose to go into the military against the wishes of her father and what she was, um, like, who she was trying to create herself to be within uh, the world uh, of the ship, um, and uh, she made a twist in that script uh, that was kind of a different side of Dee. They ended up giving elements of that performance to um, Kat, to Luciana's character. <gasps> Where's Lu Thank She's you. not here. Thank Thanks you. Safe. Sorry, I got distracted by Luciana. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but Dee, you know, Dee operated from... Well, a duality. She was in constant conflict between the desires of her heart and what needed to be done in her physical reality. Uh, she had to toughen herself. She had to steel herself against uh, what she saw around her. But she was ultimately a very sensitive person. Mm. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> yeah. She seemed like a more normal, well-rounded person. Thank you. Yeah. Pretty. Yeah. I miss Go. her. And uh, so t tell me, while well, someone's waiting to have a... Come oh, on. We love someone a photo. With the no? <laughs> no. Um, how long would a day have been? A, oh, a, a, uh, a regular working day. Let me tell you something about being an actor. Stamina. <laughs> uh, some of the older actors that I work with, You'll be on a set and you'll be like with young kids and they're like tired and drinking coffee and complaining and like oh, falling asleep. And you'll see some of these older actors, particularly stage actors or women who have been in the business for a long time and they're on their feet and they're whip smart and they're like, but all of them say the same thing. What you need in this business is stamina. You need to know how to pace yourself and how to keep your energy uh, together because <laughs> we have this term in the film industry called fratter day. That's when you start on a Friday and finish on a Saturday. Um, I mean, the longest day I've ever shot on a TV show was 22 hours. That's 22 hours of a working day. Um, 
Battlestar depended on the day of the week and it depended on the director. I won't name names Michael Reimer. Um, <laughs> if you got Reimer in, a, in an eight day episode on a Friday, you were hooped. <laughs> Take naps. Um, uh, standard contract working day is 10 hours. It's usually about 12 hours. Um, BSG in, in particularly heavy contexts, we would work 14 to 16 hours sometimes. They're long days. And no, it's not all sitting around in your trailer. Like, that happened. You, sometimes you have to kill time. But you can't fall asleep. Because the minute you fall asleep, somebody will come knocking on your trailer door like the goddamn police. <laughs> and they'll be like, you got to be in set in five minutes. And you're like all puffy-eyed and crusty. And you don't know where you are. And you can't remember your lines. And you show up. And it's like bright lights. And you're like, hold on a second. <laughs> Just give me one minute. So don't fall asleep. That's, yeah. that's not how that works. Yeah. yeah, That's that hurry up and wait. Yeah. Well, each scene takes about four hours. A lighting setup is probably 45 minutes. Um, so yeah. So you look at the day and you're like, oh, we've got 11 pages to shoot. And now how, many page, <laughs> how many pages would you shoot on an average day? Um, an average TV day is probably seven pages. Wow. A nice day is five. A heavy day is nine. Um, a terrible day is 11 pages. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, compared to movies, movies shoot two pages a day. <sighs> I have one minute, but I'm going to try and do it. Hi. Hi. <laughs> terrible lie, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I know. <laughs> but I'm we sorry. can see you so beautifully. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, cannot quote uh, English, but I hope you understand me. I do. You're doing really well. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask you, in what movie, uh, uh, what you choose, uh, what uh, you will play in, and well, uh, which character will you play? And it, was, it, it can any any movie can it be? An act, a movie that already exists, or a movie what you will, what you want to do. Like I said, I I really want to get in on the on the superhero game. I don't have to be a good superhero. And do Villains you, have better wardrobes, and do you if you want notice. To, <laughs> <laughs> and do you want to learn skills, uh, art skills, or? Uh, yes. I have to learn, I have to learn how to fight. I have to learn stunt training. Um, stunts are so difficult are so difficult. Actually, my next q and I'll, do I have another? I don't have another solo, do I? No, oh. I don't think so. Well, I'll, I'll queue it up at my uh, come and see me at table. Oh, we gotta go. Um, I did some stunts once for a movie uh, called The Seventh Son that nobody ever saw. Um, but I landed so hard on my back that I had a contusion. Uh, the belt that I was wearing actually imprinted itself into my skin and stayed there for three days. <laughs> the print of the belt. So it's very, very difficult, but it's so rewarding to like execute some of those, those moves. And I'm never gonna get to fight in real life. You know, who's, who's fighting me? Nobody. <laughs> Who am I fighting? <laughs> Not one person. So yeah, I would, I would love to be a villain in an action movie. And learn how to kick. <laughs> I think and I kick go. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, technically, I should be up here for another four minutes because I was four minutes late. If you the people like, have spoken. if you like, if if. The, <laughs> <laughs> Wait. All right. If, what was my yeah, question? This is your chance. This is it. This is it. Oh, oh has that person seen walking, maybe. Walking, I like it. Oh, she's walking. back. Walking. Um, who's seen Westworld? What do you guys think about the, the, like, what's going on there? I was just like, hold on a second. I've seen this all before. <laughs> all right. Hi. Hi again. Um, you mentioned that you uh, moved to Vancouver when you were very young. Um, I've been to Vancouver a couple of years ago and I noticed that it is a city with many uh, cultural backgrounds. So how was it for you to move there? Had you any difficulties to fit in or was it easy? Yes. I mean, 
Vancouver is very culturally mixed, but everybody is uh, quite separate. There's like, yeah, there's like little India and little Italy and little Vietnam and little, so um, whereas like in Toronto, everybody is together. Everybody mixes. There are parts of town, but people consider themselves Torontonians, no matter, you know, whatever their background. But Vancouver is a little bit more segregated. And um, there weren't a lot of brown, black people there. I was the only, I mean, I call myself African because I am. <laughs> um, I was the only African person in my school, African Canadian, in both my grade school and my high school. And people would do weird things behind me in the hall and touch my hair or like steal my braids when they thought, I'm like, I can feel that. It's attached to my head. <laughs> um, and I had some weird, I had some weird uh, instances. Um, actually, it's, it's kind of the inspiration for the project that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, I'm, I went to the Canadian, uh, the CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, our national broadcaster, and I pitched them a show about a Canadian civil rights leader named Viola Desmond to, to play her character. Thank you. Um, because of that experience, because of the immigrant experience that I had in Canada and the nature of the racism that I encountered, because it's hard to identify, it's hidden behind politeness, <laughs> um, um, and how it paralleled uh, the experience of, of black Nova Scotians in, in the 1940s. Plus, I'm going to get to wear a really cool outfit. Well, I'm, oh, no, that's, I'm kidding. Um, it's very different now. Vancouver is um, a lot more diverse. But it's still kind of cool because when I'm there and I see other black people, we do really just say hi to each other. We're always like, what's going on? What's up? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I still do that. It's a cool thing. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I think I really got to go because they like yeah. just took the yeah. they took the clock away entirely. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have no more time. Thank yeah. you guys. Um, I, I'll see you at my table. I'll see you with the rest of yeah. family. Take my a BSG family. I'll see you in the halls. Say hi. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Candice McClure. Vielen Dank, dass ihr euch das Video angesehen habt. Wenn es euch gefallen hat dann lasst einen Daumen nach oben da. Hier habt ihr nun verschiedene Auswahlmöglichkeiten. Ihr könnt oben links unseren Kanal abonnieren, oben rechts geht es weiter zu tollen Videos von diesem Event, unten rechts gelangt ihr zur Internetseite vom nächsten Event. Zu guter Letzt kann ich euch noch den Space Store empfehlen. Hier gibt es alles mögliche an Fanartikeln zu euren Lieblingsserien und Filmen. Bis demnächst auf diesem Kanal.